which of these shapes is Booba and which is Kiki? What? <laughs> Booba or Kiki? What's a Booba and what's a Kiki? They're just made up words. So which shape looks like Booba and which shape looks like a Kiki? This one is Booba and this one is Kiki. This is Booba and this is Kiki. Booba and Kiki. Booba to me, maybe a splash, you know, Kiki. I don't know, maybe something shiny like a key ring, you know. Well, this one is uh, Kiki and this one is uh, Booba. You're not alone if you thought this one was Booba and this one was Kiki. In fact, upwards of 90% of the groups tested will reliably match Kiki to the jagged shape and Booba to the rounded shape. And no matter where it's tested or what language it's tested in, researchers see the Booba Kiki effect. The effect was originally documented by Wolfgang Kohler in the 1920s with Spanish speaking population. And since then, it's been taken all over the world, including preschool. It's been conducted on toddlers, and a similar effect was observed. So, what's going on? I don't know, it just looks like it. Come on, look at the, the curves and the, 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 this looks like a booba, man. Like, it's like a booba. But there's gotta be a better explanation than that. Kelly McCormick of Emory University riffs on some of the popular theories. Some people do think that we're all a little bit synesthetic, that we're associating audio and visual information because we have kind of a wiring between auditory and visual parts of the brain. Maybe it's the shape our mouths are making as we're pronouncing these words that causes us to associate. Um, so when you say the word booba, your lips are rounded, your oral cavity is very open. Booba, nothing tense or linear or tight about it as there is when you say kiki, kiki. It could also be something that arises over the course of experience. Maybe we're kind of simulating what it would be like to interact with something of these different forms. Take a bowling ball and a pine cone uh, and you roll them across the ground. The bowling ball is going to have this kind of whoa, whoa, whoa. And the pine cone is going to be more like T -t 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 -t. But the booba kiki effect is really just a roundabout way of answering a more pointed question. At the heart of it, we're really asking why certain sounds are especially good for representing certain meanings. So one thing that we've done is make hundreds and hundreds of nonsense words um, and done kind of a playoffs. Hey, which of these do you prefer? Is, is this a good word for pointed? Is this a good word for roundedness? And word after word, you can narrow in on the exact sounds that convey a meaning. Words like teke, kite, Tite were most likely to be rated as sounding extremely pointed. And those are words with very abrupt transitions in the sounds. And on the opposite side of the spectrum? Nolu, mumo, uh, lomo. These are all characterized by sonorant consonants. They're voiced consonants, and they all have rounded vowels. By figuring out what it is about specific words that's driving the effect, we can come up with a better account of what kind of cross-sensory mappings might be driving it. So whether it's just the way we make a sound, or we learn to associate that sound with a concept, or we're just wired weird, you can be certain this is not all nonsense. I just know this is a booba. This is booba, man. <laughs>